Good morning all! These bags came through the post, which can only mean one thing. It's post bag! I hope this is the right bag, because if it isn't, then I'm going to go off on a tangent. Because this is most relevant. Hmm, bag within a bag. What's within this bag? I don't know why I bothered to cut these bags, I might as well just tear them. Is it what I want for this project? Oh yes, I think it is. Yes, I think this is. So this is for my lithium ion battery pack project. And the project is essentially lots of voltmeters and lots of ammeters because I want to see how much current is flowing between cells by virtue of the active balancing board. And of course, I want to see what the voltage of the individual cells are. Mm, let me just get my battery pack. And here it is, and it's actually got spiders webs on it. Spiders have been crawling over my battery pack. So this is a 4S 2P battery pack. It's got this active balancer, which if I uh, drew some current out of this or put current in, the balancer would fire up and redistribute um, energy between the cells. So I want to know how much current is actually being moved between cells. So I want to put ammeters in well all five of these wires or certainly four of them we could probably do without one of them but at the same time i want voltmeters to show me the voltage on each of the cells so i just want lots of ammeters and voltmeters now i've used the ina219 before but this is the ina226 uh, how quickly will my camera focus given this feeble amount of light Hmm, never it would seem. So you might just be able to see 226 written on that chip. That's a really rather curious um, current shunt resistor. It almost looks like a resistor. No, it doesn't look like a label spin. It looks like there's a label stuck on the top, but I don't think it is. So it's an R01. So what's that? 0.01 ohms is what I'm guessing. But that's a really curious thing. I've not seen one like that before. So the idea here is that this thing measures um, the voltage across that resistor. But what's interesting about the 226 that the 219 didn't have is that it can measure the current flow with a voltage across this resistor anywhere between the uh, minimum voltage, which would be ground, and the maximum voltage that this thing is measuring, which I think is VBS. The data sheet explains it quite well. I'll print one out. So this is the INA226 high side or low side measurement, bidirectional, which is important because current's going to flow in either direction, current and power monitor with an I2C compatible interface. But what's interesting is this high side or low side sensing. So the, here's your load. This is the load. So this is whatever your, your this, I suppose this could be uh, feeding current into the battery. So the battery would be the load. Or uh, current is coming out of the battery, so something else is the load. But anyway, here's your shunt, and you can put it either on the low side, otherwise connected to ground, or you can put it on the high side. And that is important for me because these sensors, I'm going to have one per cell, so I bought five of these things. Um, actually, I want five current measurements because I want to measure current in all of the five wires on my battery pack. It's going to mean that the shunt is, um, I want it on the high side of the load. I can't even remember why now. I'm going to have to do a drawing. Well, before I do that, let me get these out because I want to have a look at how I'm going to link these things together. And if I go for five of these things to measure the five currents in this um, energy, uh, this active balancer, the reason I might do that is because there are actually five connections on here. It may be unnecessary to measure the current in one of these lines, like possibly this black wire, which is going to the most negative side of the battery. I just don't know yet. But um, in order to get this to work, I really want to put these things in a sort of array. So they have these holes on the board, and I'm planning to put little bolts through with little spacers so that these things sit uh, in a array like that and then the five input wires 
can go to the I don't know the top connection, and then the five uh, other connections will go off to the various cells in the pack. But these things should be able to measure the currents in the active balancer and the voltages of the cells. So I should be able to get all my ammeter and voltmeter measurements with just a stack of five of these things in a group. But it seems that the voltage measurement is V bus with respect to ground. Now, does ground also mean ground over here? It probably does. So I think I'm going to have to measure the cell voltages uh, from a common ground, so the least, the lowest voltage in the whole of the battery. And then for the second cell, I'll actually be measuring the second cell plus the first cell. For the third cell, it'll be the bottom three cells all added together. So the Arduino will have to do some subtracting to get the individual cell voltages. But the currents, I think, are all going to be measured on the high side of my voltage measurement. So the fact that this is a high side or low side measuring device should work, shouldn't it? Well, I suppose I'm going to have to build it and find out. But uh, yeah, this will make a nice, neat little stacked module with these things all stacked, spaced apart like that, all quite close to each other. Um, now I can common the I squared C's up. What I'll need to do is set these all to different I squared C addresses. I've got a feeling they've got programmable addresses on here. Yes, let's take a look at the back. So on the back here, you've got those three pads, A0, VCC and A1. And I think connecting them to VCC and leaving them open I think you can get more combinations. I've got a feeling you can have up to either eight or 16 addresses there. And that's fine because I'm going to need five addresses if I put five of these boards all on a common I squared C bus. So yes, I should be able to measure these on. Now that, that assumes, of course, um, that the INA226 library that I go with, and I don't know how many there are. I've got to find one first. Um, has the ability to have the I squared C address alterable for multiple instances of this module. No idea how this is going to work yet, but there they are. Uh, is the camera going to work today? Let's see. So one piece INA226 high or low side measurement bidirectional current and power monitor. These were $3.13 each, free shipping. And they came from Survey 2014. Okay, push those up there. And the next one is this. Let's see what this is. Well, I know what this is. Because I can feel it. Now, I was a bit concerned that this might have leaked. So let's see. Has it leaked? No, don't think it has. I felt something sticky on the bag, but I've got a feeling it was just the self-adhesive thing there. Doesn't look like it's leaked, which is good. So this is uh, 50 grams of some Chinese stuff. <laughs> I mean, should this really have got through customs? I suppose it is identifiable. It says K300. This is K300 UV glue. So shall we test the UV glue? Yeah, I don't think there's been any leakage, which is good news. Not sure about that white cap. I mean, I presume what's in here is completely sealed from the light. I just had a thought, you know that advert that comes up on YouTube where some dude glues two bolts together? Let's do that with my helping hands. I'll get two bolts and I'll glue them together with UV glue. I'm not going to play that horrible music they play in the background, but let's give that a go. Yeah, have you seen that advert? They glue two screws together with the UV glue and then they want something like 15 quid for one of those syringes of glue. Yeah, I guess that's what keeps the, the light out. And then you've got this. Now, is that got a black? Yes, that's it. Uh, so I'm going to have to cut that, peel this tab off and cut the end of that nozzle. I might as well cut the end of the nozzle first. Yeah, 15 quid for a tube of glue, which you can get on eBay for um, a pound or a dollar. So it's all a bit of a nonsense, really. Let me cut that back a bit further. Oh, that's quite a lot harder. I should be doing this on the cutting mat, I suppose, but whatever. 
No, it still hasn't gone through. What's going on? Right, can I see light down there? Yeah, tiny little hole in the top there. Uh, oh, I've got to peel that back now. Where are my pliers? Yeah, so I thought I'd buy 50 mils of this stuff. Uh, oh, 50 grams, actually. But then that's going to be about 50 millilitres, isn't it? Um, because I do like it, it's so useful. And it's I prefer it to the two-part epoxy because this is just one part. Well, it's sort of two-part. Uh, the second part being your U oh no, I better not shine that at the glue. Uh, being your UV lamp light source. But that's going to take a while to get that off cleanly. Yeah, this isn't really working, so I think I'm just going to have to punch a hole in this. Uh, where's a spiky thing that doesn't mind getting glue all over it? Right, that's done. That screws down over there now. Now, is it going to make a good seal? Oh, that seems very indistinct. Oh well, it'll have to do. And then this actually goes down into a recess on there, which seems pretty good. So that shouldn't leak. Right, let's try the uh, recreation of the advertisement. Oh yeah, that's coming out already. There it is, there it is, there it is. Let's UV it. Oh, shouldn't look directly at that. I ah, should only need five seconds. This is a very powerful torch. Far more powerful than those little... I'll put the lid on there. Those little um, LED torches that you get with the, the little miniature ones of these. Now, did that work? No. <laughs> no. Why? This is supposed to... Oh, maybe I need some more UV. Let's give it some. I must admit, I was a bit concerned that I'd get this stuff and it just wouldn't set and it would be a ripoff and it would just be a load of cheap gunk in there. Has that worked? Oh yeah! Oh it's kind of soft, that's interesting. That's, that's kind of bendy. So it hasn't entirely worked. But it does look like it is UV triggered glue. I'll have another go at that I think. Perhaps I just need more glue. Let's give it a bit more this time. Are they close enough? Yeah, I guess so. That's more glue. It's going to drip, which is why I had that thing. Let's make sure it doesn't drip by getting the UV on it. But I want this to really set hard. Maybe I need to do this from all angles. Oh, that really fluoresces, doesn't it? Yeah. So is that going to harden up? Sometimes you see wisps of smoke coming off this stuff. Oh, that looks pretty good. And there it is, a solid join. And I should actually be able to, oh no. Yeah, I don't know, it's not quite like the stuff that you get in those little pens. But I guess it should work. What's interesting is that parts of this seem to be still a bit liquid. Can you see? The fact that that still seems a bit liquid. So I don't know, maybe this stuff just needs a little bit more UV. There's a little smudge of it there. So let's give it some more UV and just check whether it just needs a lot more UV on this particular mix. Or maybe I need to shake the bottle up um, because perhaps it's settled. Yeah, that's a possibility. I'll give the bottle a good old shake. I need to do some experiments on this, but um, yeah, essentially this is a larger amount of the UV glue you get in those little pens. Yes, that does seem a little bit more solid now. So I think I'm going to do two things. I'm going to give it more UV for a bit longer. I'm also going to give this a good old shake because I just wonder whether it's settled out in transit and it's been sat in my post tray for I don't know a month yeah so this is the stuff uh, 50 milliliters of K300 UV glue curing adhesive now I paid 369 but they seem to put the price up to 451 perhaps they've been watching that uh, YouTube advert but nevertheless you know if you bought 50 grams of this stuff via that YouTube advert you'd be paying about 300 quid, wouldn't you? So $4.51, free shipping, and this came from Big Fashion Market. Right, let's push this aside. Actually, I'm not gonna put that in the light 
Let me put that over there somewhere dark. Okay, next. And I'm going to just rummage around for a random one from the bin. Here we are. What's in this one? Let's find out. It's going to be something old. Oh, it's tiny. Oh, it's some uh, transistors. Uh, the light level is absolutely hopeless in here. Let's switch on my overhead lights. That's one. That's the other one. Um, and see if we can see, with the aid of the magnifying glass, what these are. And they are, you should be able to see it there, BC182s. Okay, these are for the Vocoda. The Vocoda project, which is really very 2019 now. We're moving on to 2020. Now, that's not to say that I'm not going to carry on with the Vocoda. I am. But it's going to have to take a bit of a back seat because one of the themes for 2020 for me is something that fits on my desk. And the Vocoda has now got very big and it does take a complete desk clean to get it out and lay it all out and set up the audio recorder and all that sort of stuff. So, yeah, these are for the Vocoda BC182 transistors. Um, we'll see it again in due course, but just a bit less frequently. OK, found them. These were purchased some time ago. Oh, I'm not sure if there's any dates on here. Yes, estimated between Feb 18 and March 30. That's probably getting on for a year ago. So they are 10 pieces, BC182 transistor, uh, $1.89. Free shipping. These came from Hoi Components. And so these are today's post bag items. Now, big thanks to my sponsor, JLC. PCB. I think actually the next video is going to be my next uh, PCBs. Also a big thanks to Patreons whose generosity is in their genes. Did you like that? Uh, if you want to be a Patreon supporter you can click this link here. Up here are another couple of videos, more of my stuff, and if you're not subscribed to this channel, and you really should be, you can click this link here and subscribe. Cheerio!